Good morning. Welcome to the prayer porch. It's good to have you here today. It's a wonderful Monday morning. I'm excited to start another week and move some mountains. God, I love you and I praise you and I thank you. Thank you that this is where I can come in the morning just to take one a piece of your word and put it in my heart so that I can change my day. So that I can submit my day and surrender my day to you and all that I am. That I may grow in you and that my relationship may grow tighter and tighter and tighter. I love you so much, Lord, and I thank you for who you are. I thank you that you are my all in all. Be in this moment, Lord, and bless the words that fall off my lips. Let it fall on ears that need to hear it and just nurture them and encourage others as you encourage me. Let me keep this word and let me be a light for you. I love you and I praise you. Increase my faith, Lord. Increase my faith. In Jesus' name, amen. I am, I had a wonderful weekend. It's just been a wonderful time in the Lord and just a wonderful time with friends and family. It was my, uh, my family came in for a birthday party and it was just, it was just great. So, but one of the things that I love about my family is that uh, we are able to encourage each other. And my sister is uh, just my sisters and I are very close. I love my sisters. My youngest sister had sent a uh, little message on our prayer team thing that which she's in. She and both my sisters are in my prayer chain group, and she had sent something on the day that she was praying for the group, and it's just left itself written and wrapped on my heart very powerfully. So I thought I would start there and share it with you because I want to talk about mountains. I've been singing all weekend. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He's just mighty to save. And she gave us the scripture and she um, sent the scripture in Mark. And she said, go to Mark chapter 10 and read this scripture. And after you read the scripture about mountains, go back and take that scripture and put in the word sin. Put in the word my sin. And it just adds so much power and so much because you realize the power and strength that you have in the name of the Lord. That, but in the name of Jesus, what you're able to overcome. And whatever it is that's trying to tell you, mm -mm, this is too big for you. This is too big for you. Whether it's something that you are wrestling with spiritually, whether it is something that, um, you know, I just, I just can't get a grip on being disciplined in my eating or being disciplined in my language or being disciplined with this or this. I'm just, I really struggle. This is the one thing that is constantly, I'm not disciplined with my time and giving it habitually to God. I'm, I, I'm having a hard time with surrender, whatever it might be, whatever it might be. And, um, when she said that all weekend, I had been repeating this verse in my head and I've been laying the things out that I struggle with. Lord, uh, I, I just speak to my ability, my inability to control what, the, what I say. Sometimes I feel like I have to feel, I don't like silence. I feel like I have to feel it with something. And then after I say things, I'm like, why did I say that? That didn't even make sense. Not that it only didn't make sense. Sometimes it comes out and I thought that could be interpreted totally wrong. Why did I say that? And um, so I started thinking of all these things, whether it's, why is it that I'm sitting here thinking I have to snack on food? Go snack on the word. If you got to eat, do something. Instead of putting something in your mouth, Lori, take a piece of scripture and put it in there. And then if you're still hungry, eat. All these things have been going through my mind. And, um, and here's the scripture. Let me share it with you. Get your Bible out. Get that sword out. And don't take my word for it. Do your own. And I went, it's in Mark chapter 10. And in Mark chapter 10, let me find it here. I'm sorry, chapter 11. That's why I couldn't find it. In chapter 11, and starting in verse 20, it says, Then Jesus says to his disciples, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must 
really believe it really happens. You must believe that it will happen and you must have no doubt in your heart. I tell you that you can pray for anything and if you believe that you have received it, it'll be yours. But when you are praying, you must first forgive anyone who is holding you or who you are holding a grudge against so that the Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. I am, um, I think it's interesting here. I wasn't even going to go there, but where it talks about you have to, sometimes things don't happen because we're the barricade. I learned a long time ago, one of the things that I always do when I'm talking to somebody or I'm in a situation, before I ever approach it, I say, okay, wait, 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 God, show me my part. Show me if it's my unforgiveness. Show me if it's my pride. Show me if it is. And sometimes what he shows me is really ugly. It's really ugly. But it's always healing when I release it. It's always healing when I release it. And so I think of that because then it comes back up here because once you've done that, Lord, show me what's standing in my way. Show me what is standing in my way from, and let's go backwards. And let's do what she said. Let's say where he says, um, have faith in God and I will tell you the truth. If you say to this sin, the sin that's bugging you, the thing that's hounding you, that thorn and that's, ugh, I just, why, why? And when Paul says, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. Speak to it, speak to it as though it is your mountain and say, be lifted out of me and thrown into the sea. Be thrown into the sea. I'm done with you. I'm not dealing with this anymore. And I am not even going to let this hinge of unforgiveness in my heart keep me from doing that. But Jesus refers to this another time. If you go over to Matthew and you look in Matthew chapter uh, 17 or 18, where got, Jesus is talking and he tells, they come to him and they said, why weren't we able to cast this demon out of this boy? And he says, ha, ah, how many times do I have to tell you? If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move and it'll move. Faith of a mustard seed. And you can speak to that sin and say, go to the sea, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Wow. I just think right now my mind's racing with a lot of mountains that I need to talk to. I want to tell those mountains, be gone. I'm his. I'm his. And I want all that he has for me. And I am not going to let the enemy put the barrier of a mountain in the way. No. When I was a kid, I think of Squirrel Hill Tunnel that went to Pittsburgh. There was nothing keeping people from Pittsburgh. They went right through the mountain. <laughs> I want to go right through the mountain. I want to get rid of the mountain and say, you're no longer in my way. I'm running to my daddy. I'm running to my daddy. So speak to some mountains today. Because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And he's the potter. His hands move mountains so that we can run in his pasture. So you just got to say, Daddy, can you move this mountain for me? He says, sure. I got it. I got this. Have a great day. It's going to be a wonderful week. Get in the word, get in the word, and you will move mountains. Have a good day.